Are you a filmmaker looking to make some extra cash this year? Well, I have five of the best side hustles to get into for the year 2023 to make you some additional cash with minimal effort. Let's get into it. Now with these different side hustles, I have the money making opportunity form. I'm gonna tell you where you can do these different side hustles and I got a couple different things to know about these side hustles. So this is gonna be packed with value. If anything in this video gives you a spark, an idea, just inspires, motivates you, make sure to drop it a like, all right? Don't cost you nothing. Let's get into it though, all right? The first side hustle is gonna be selling stock footage. Now, I don't know about you, but over the years of me doing filmmaking and making music videos, I've filmed some really fire shots that just die on a hard drive. They're in the hard drive graveyard, doing nothing, not making me no money. And I rarely go back and even look at this stuff. And I'm sure you're just like that. So selling stock footage is gonna be a really good side hustle to make some passive income. Now, what's the money making opportunity of selling stock footage? Well. I wouldn't say you're gonna get rich quick. It's not something that you're gonna be rich overnight with, but the really good thing about stock footage is it's passive. So it's low, but it's passive, which means you don't have to do much to start making this money. Now let's talk about where to sell stock footage. Where do you go to? Well, the first website is gonna be blackbox.com. Now blackbox.com is gonna be probably the best website because what this does is it allows you to upload your footage one time to this website, Blackbox, and it's gonna distribute your footage across an array of different other websites that sell stock footage. It's gonna collect all the money from those different platforms whenever that sells, and then it's gonna give it to you. They're gonna take their fee. It's just gonna be the easiest way to do it. You don't have to upload it to a ton of different websites, but thing about black box is it's not the easiest to get accepted to so you might not actually get accepted but i got a couple of different other websites you can use as well the next one is going to be pi5 pi5 has been around for a really long time so they have displayed longevity in its marketplace it's going to be a lot of people there searching for stock footage as well so pi5 is going to be awesome next you got adobe stock which is great and it's actually integrated into adobe premiere pro so it's gonna be a marketplace there as well for people looking for stock footage. The next one is ArtGrid. You probably heard ArtGrid a lot on YouTube just from sponsorships, but ArtGrid probably pays the most for stock footage. So I've heard from a lot of other people who do this as a side hustle. The thing about ArtGrid though is it is a little bit harder to get accepted to. So while they do pay the most, I've heard, this is also one of the ones that isn't the easiest to get access to. Then you have platforms like Storyblocks. I talk about Storyblocks a lot. This isn't sponsored. None of the companies that I'm talking about in this video are paid me to say anything. So keep that in mind. I'm not getting paid to say any of this, but you can actually sell footage to Storyblocks to put on their marketplace as well. So those are the places you can sell stock footage. Now, these are the things to know. The first thing to know is, like I said, you can sell old footage. You don't have to go out and film specific shots for stock footage, even though that is a good practice. You don't have to. Like I said, I have a ton of really good clips just sitting on the hard drive, and I'm sure you do too. Pull them up. Get your hard drives out, upload them and see what they do. The next thing to know is landscapes and simple actions do the best on stock asset libraries. So really good drone clips of cityscapes, skylines like New York or like time lapses of really good landscapes. Those are the things that are gonna do really well on stock libraries. Also simple actions. When I'm using stock footage for video projects of mine, I'm looking for things like people walking across a crowded uh, walkway in the street or like somebody cooking on a stove or somebody making a glass of coffee. Like these really simple actions that have no significance to us filmmakers are really good on stock libraries because people are trying to tell a story. So simple actions do really well. The next thing to know is tagging well tends to do really well. Whenever I'm looking for stock footage for projects, I'm searching specific. I need a black guy on the couch eating popcorn or watching a movie. Like, be as specific as you can. Don't do generic like a guy sitting at a desk. No, get specific. A black guy sitting at the desk typing angry. Like, you know, if you can tag as well as people are searching, you tend to do really well in the libraries of stock assets on different websites. So those are the things to know. The next side hustle is gonna be renting out your filmmaking gear. Now this is actually a really good side hustle because if you're anything like me, you have a ton of filmmaking gear that doesn't get used all the time. I wouldn't say it's necessarily uh, useless, but you have specific items for specific shoots. And when you aren't using these things, you can rent them out and make some passive income. Okay, so what's the money making opportunity for renting out gear? Well, this is gonna depend. It could actually be a lot, but this is really just gonna depend on the different filmmaking items you have, as well as where you are renting out the gear. Because it's gonna be different demands in different markets at different places. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth in a second. Okay, so where do you rent out filmmaking gear? You can do this on your own, but 
This website is probably the best and I'll tell you why. Sharegrid.com. Now, the reason why Sharegrid.com is the best website to rent out your gear is because they offer insurance coverage at no additional cost to you aside from the fee that you pay just for hosting on their website. So if somebody wanted to rent out my C70 for a music video right now, I'm not going to be the one to pay for the insurance on it. They are going to be paying for the insurance through Sharegrid. So it just takes the load off of you with all of the like logistical information of creating uh, an insurance package for your gear. Like if you don't want to think about none of that, just use ShareGrid and pay them the fee. It's going to be a little bit of money out of your pocket, but it's going to be the easiest process to run out your gear. These are the things to know when it comes to running out your gear. The first thing is where you are is going to heavily be dependent on how much you make or what people are actually going to need. So let's just throw out a hypothetical scenario. Let's say I'm in LA and I own a Red Raptor package with cinema lenses and a study cam. These things are going to be needed a lot more in LA and people are going to be able to actually pay the premium that these cost to rent as opposed to me trying to rent out this exact same gear package in the middle of Virginia where probably nobody needs this. So if you're in a hub, you're probably going to make the most amount of money depending on the actual gear that you own. That doesn't deter people who are living in smaller spaces, but this is just something to keep in mind. The next thing to know about renting out your gear is you can actually build some really good relationships with people through renting out your gear. My first big production in LA, I rented out in a Sterilite package on ShareGrid, and this is where I met my guy Sal. My guy Sal rents out gear full time. Like he has an entire like office space with tons of aperture lights, with tons of stairs. He has an Alexa LF kit that he rents out for like Netflix shows. Like he does this professionally and this is like the only thing that he does. But the relationship that we built was something that we were able to carry outside of just sharegrid.com. Whenever I'm in LA now, I'm able to hit my homie style up and be like, hey, I need this. Or you know somebody that does this. Or you know somebody who has this. Just me renting and getting this information off of ShareGrid and being a cool guy gave me this relationship with this dude that I knew nothing about. And now I have connections beyond him. So if you rent out gear, you can actually build relationships to have opportunities to get on set later or do different things in the filmmaking industry. So ShareGrid is actually a really good website. And this is a really good side hustle. The next side hustle is going to be editing we can't skip over editing us as filmmakers we can all edit for the most part and it doesn't have to be the best editing in the world because people need edits for things outside of feature films like companies need short form content youtubers need editing for the youtube videos and i'll talk about specifically where you should go and the type of things you should be editing for in a second but editing is a really good side hustle so what's the money making opportunity of editing well i would say a lot actually and the really good thing about editing is it's frequent most of the time, if you get in a gig for editing for either a production company or a business or a YouTuber, they need this over and over and over again. So this could be a constant stream of money if you're actually good at it and you consistently work hard at it. So where do you get editing gigs at? Well, the first place is going to be just outreach. You can reach out to businesses. You can reach out to directors who might need editing for potential projects in the future. Or you can reach out to YouTubers. I think YouTubers is a really good place for editing because, like I said, people need YouTube videos edited frequently. I have an editor right now for my YouTube videos and I need him to edit all the time. So he's making a sustainable living outside of him doing his own filmmaking and editing for other people just off of me alone. So I think YouTubers are a really good um, avenue when it comes to editing. You can do outreach through Instagram, through Twitter. You can do emails, you can do DMs. Like these are all really good places, my bad. <laughs> These are all really good places to do outreach when it comes to editing. The next place you can get editing gigs is on Fiverr or Upwork. And when you think about Fiverr, you probably think like, it's no way I'm editing for $5. But if you've ever actually used Fiverr, it's people on here who offer services for an array of different prices. So you can get on here and actually put the price of your work at whatever you want. Like you can edit for $300 or five or six, or you could edit for $125 as well, depending on what you're going to be editing. So it's really up to you to kind of set the price of how much you want to edit for. But sites like Fiverr or Upwork are really good places to just post your gigs. You can post up the edits that you've done before in the past. We can see them. And they want to cop. They can just cop right on the website. It's also a really huge marketplace as well. So a lot of people are already on Fiverr searching for stuff. So you don't necessarily have to have an audience to be able to edit for people if you use sites like Fiverr because it's already people still searching for it. These are the things to know when it comes to editing. The first is YouTubers need frequent work. I say that because I'm a YouTuber, I upload a lot, and there's tons of YouTubers out there who don't have editors and you could take a load off their back by just taking on some editing work from them. 
The really good thing about it is it's frequent and it can pay really well depending on what they have going on with sponsorships and the amount of money that they're making off of AdSense. The editing is easier, I would say, than traditional editing of music videos and corporate style stuff, but it's different. So you kind of got to know the art of YouTube editing. You got to kind of study engagement. You got to kind of study what you need to take away from like gaps and stuff like that. It's a little bit different, but I would say it's easy. It's not super hard to do. The next thing to know is short form is a really good pitch right now for whatever outreach you're doing. So if you're reaching out for businesses, for video editing, pitch short form to them because short form is popping right now. I have so many people who email me on a daily saying, yo, I can chop up your YouTube videos into some short form content for you. And this is a really good pitch because people need short form content. People need reels, TikToks, people need uh, YouTube shorts. Reach out to people and pitch short form. Another really good thing about short form is that you can actually use the assets that you already have to produce the short form content for people. So say you have a subscription to Canva, not sponsored by the way, even though I was sponsored by Canva in the past, you can use the assets from Canva to build the short form content out for the people that you're gonna be charging it for, which is awesome. That's great. Aside from just Canva, you can use your other subscriptions like Storyblocks or Envato. Not sponsored, I have to keep saying this because these are people who sponsored me in the past, but these are also really good avenues to be able to use your subscription-based platforms to make more money from. If somebody's telling a story in a short or IG reel or a TikTok video, you can pull stock footage from Storyblocks to put on top of it. If somebody needs really engaging text over top of the shorts, every time you see a short, you see like the yellow font with the text flying everywhere, Use Envato to get a text overlay template to do this. Or say somebody needs a freaking YouTube intro or show intro, you can use a template from Storyblocks or a template from Envato. Like these are all things that you can use and this is actually really good game. So you can actually utilize all of those other subscriptions that you might have to make you some money as well. The next thing to know is editing is remote. You don't have to leave a crib. You don't got to pick up your camera. You don't have to plug your SD card into the computer, none of that. It's all remote so you can apply for these jobs and you can do outreach to get editing popping right now and not even have to use your camera. The next side hustle is going to be creating a course. And I know when you hear this, you're probably thinking like, I don't have an audience. I don't know anything. Why am I going to make a course? <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you how you can sell this course without having an audience and why you should actually think about making a course regardless if you're like a master in filmmaking because it doesn't really matter all right you know something that's valuable to somebody and with the platform that i'm going to talk about it's actually going to be valuable for this platform as well so what's the money making opportunity of selling a course well it can actually be a lot but if you don't have an audience i wouldn't expect to make a lot of money selling courses or even creating courses it could be a lot but for the most people it's not going to be a lot it's going to be decent it's not going to be bad though so what do you sell courses? What's the platform to use to sell or even create a course? I'm gonna say Skillshare. Now, I like Skillshare a lot. I have a course on Skillshare. And I think the Skillshare is perfect for people who don't have an audience because Skillshare already has the audience into it. Skillshare is already a marketplace with people who subscribe for the platforms. So you don't have to necessarily go out and make a course and sell it to people. You can create courses for this platform and then you can get paid through the royalties of people watching it, which I'll talk about a little bit more in the future. So Skillshare is a really good place to create courses for. If you've ever used Skillshare before in the past, they have courses or classes about everything. It could be something as simple as learning the basics of Adobe Premiere Pro, the basics of DaVinci Resolve. It could be something a little bit more advanced of like color grading using LUTs, or it could be something even more advanced, like how to graphic design using Adobe Premiere Pro. You can even go into like how to create a crochet blanket. Like it's so many different things on Skillshare is literally mind boggling, but yeah, it's courses about everything. So you can make a course on Skillshare and get paid for it. Another way that you can sell a course is just through your audience. So if you already have a substantial audience, this is going to be like a really good money making tool because you can sell a lot for educational based content just online right now. So if you have an audience, think about making a course because you make a ton of money. These are the things to know. The first thing is making a course can be a lot of work, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. So if you're going to be making a high value course for your audience about you showing the process of making a music video, for instance, this is going to be a course that's going to take a lot of time. This isn't necessarily a side hustle, but if you're making something as simple as like you showing the basics of Adobe Premiere Pro, you can literally write down the concepts in a notes app right now and start making this course right now and be done by the end of the day. It could be five videos, 10 videos. It doesn't have to be super complex or take a lot of time to work. So it just depends on the concept and how you plan on doing this course, because it could be months or it can even be hours. 
it's all up to you. The second thing to know is Skillshare pays on a royalty-based payment. So this is the easiest way I can sum it up. So Skillshare has a base of people who have subscribed to the platform of Skillshare and they watch the classes and courses on the platform. So what Skillshare does is they pull in all of the money from the people who subscribe to the platform and then they look at the percentages of the content being watched on the platform. So say your courses on the site accumulated 2% of the watch volume of the content made on the site. Well, you get paid 2% of the royalty pool that's coming in from the people who subscribe to the platform. So that's essentially how it's getting paid out on the simplest basis, right? So if a lot of people watch your course, you can make a decent amount of money every single month on Skillshare. I have a course on Skillshare and I've gotten paid like six, seven grand in a month for my class, given you probably won't have the same success because you don't have the, as big of an audience as I have. But this is just something to think about. This can be something that's passive that you can create in a couple hours and actually make a substantial amount of money every single month from. The third thing to know about making courses is just make courses about what you know things that are valuable that somebody else might also want to know like i know how to freaking clean sneakers but it's probably not going to be super valuable for somebody on skillshare but if i know the basics of adobe premiere pro or say i make a mini course about people who are leaving premiere pro and going to davinci resolve which is actually a really good idea because a lot of that's happening right now that could probably be really valuable for people who are on skillshare because a lot of people want to switch over to the platform so you can show them the things that are very similar in the platforms and you can show them the differences in the davinci resolve as opposed to adobe premiere pro like these are ideas that don't take a lot of time that are really valuable that a lot of people probably will look at so think about things that you know you don't have to be a master in film um, but whatever is valuable in your mind, you can make a really quick course about it and get paid some money for it every single month. The next side hustle is going to be selling prints. Now, I know that this isn't relative or this isn't a filmmaking side hustle, but I know I shoot music videos and I can also take a really good landscape picture and I can also document a car really well and I can also take a really good cityscape. And I'm sure you can do the same too. And this could be a really good avenue to make some additional side hustle money from because whenever I take these pictures, they just sit on the hard drive and just die. I don't upload them to Instagram. I don't upload them anywhere. I just look at them. I might make a cool edit out of them and make them a background on my computer, but I don't do anything else with them. So I'm sure you do the same thing and you can make some additional money selling prints. I'm gonna tell you where and how you can do it. But first, what's the money making opportunity of selling prints? It could actually be a lot, but it's likely not a lot if you don't have a huge audience. Okay, so what do you sell prints? Printify.com is a great place to sell prints because they offer fulfillment services. Fulfillment, if you have no idea, is basically say I sell a print to you, right? Your money comes to me. I see your information over to Printify. They take all of the information. They take the design and they press up the print. They package the print. They put it in a the frame. They box it up and they ship it to you. And I keep the money without me ever having to look at the print. Like this is a really crazy concept, but they do fulfillment, which is awesome. So Printify is awesome. And it doesn't cost you any additional money. It's not like you order 100 prints and then you got to sell 100 prints to make money from it. It's like, no, if I sell one print, I just send the information to them and they make that one print and send it to the person who bought it. So it takes no upfront cost to get started selling prints right now, which is crazy. Now, these are the things to know when it comes to selling prints. Generic things tend to sell the best. What I mean by that is like, think about things you see in houses all the time. It could be a picture of a Ford truck or it could be a picture of a Brooklyn Bridge or it could be a picture of a really good landscape or a photo of a really dope cityscape like the New York like skyline like those are things that sell a lot so think about simple things that tend to sell a lot because those are going to be the best when it comes to selling off prints the next thing is you can use Instagram and Facebook ads to draw traffic to your prints so whether you're going to be selling these prints from your own account or your own creative business you can actually make this into a full on secondary business that's completely automated. So say I didn't want to sell prints as YC Imaging. I can make YC prints and I can run Facebook and Instagram ads on YC prints and that could draw traffic to that. And then that could sell, the information will go off to Printify and they will do the fulfillment. And I don't have to touch anything. I just collect the money. So ads is a really good way to draw traffic to the prints that you're going to be selling as well. The third thing to know is Etsy is a really good place to sell prints. One being 
being Etsy is already a really populated marketplace that people are searching for things on. So you don't necessarily even have to have an audience to sell on Etsy. As long as you make generic things like a print of the Brooklyn Bridge, that's something that people are going to go on Etsy and already search for. They already got millions of people on there searching for this sort of stuff. So you don't necessarily even have to have an audience to sell prints. Etsy is a really good place because it's already a marketplace. And another really good thing about Etsy is you can use Printify to directly input the sale as soon as it comes to Etsy to go straight to them to do the fulfillment. So you don't have to do anything. As soon as someone buys something on your Etsy store, the information goes directly to Printify. They print it, send it to them. You don't have to do anything. You just get paid. And the next thing to know is you don't actually have to sell prints. You can sell really popular slogans. You can sell really dope vectors of filmmaking types of posters. Like my last drop, my last merch drop, I sold some really fire posters that I got a designer to make for me. And it wasn't a print. It wasn't a landscape. It wasn't a Ford truck. It was just something really dope that looked tight on the wall. So don't think about it in the instance of I have to go take a picture of a mountain. No, if you got a really dope slogan like hustle hard i know that's really stupid but people buy stuff like that you know what i mean so think about it in that instance as well like people really will purchase things that aren't for trucks as well it could be a really dope graphic it could be a really dope slogan it could be a silhouette of a filmmaker like think about things like that as well those are also really good things that transfer over into prints well so those are my side hustles to get into in 2023 as a filmmaker ton of different value in this video man do me a favor drop it a like it doesn't cost you anything let's try to get this video to at least 2,000 likes. That would do me a really big solid, man. If you're new here to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. But I'm out, y'all. Peace.